Count them up, Broncos country, because that is one, two, three, four, five in a row, and we are rolling. We are riding with Russ. We're riding with Sean Payton. I'm riding high. I hope y'all are riding high. Uh, the Denver Broncos have just pulled off the toughest stretch I can remember as a Broncos fan in a lot of years, that we just beat literally the best defense in the entire NFL. I got the stats to prove it. Check out some of these that... Uh, right now, they are the defensive leaders in yards allowed, in pass yards allowed. They've got not just an MVP candidate, like the uh, defensive player of the year candidate and uh, MVP of the entire league candidate, Miles Garrett. He's a complete game wrecker. And we had a little Garrett on Garrett crime as Garrett Bowles shut down Miles Garrett here. We didn't have any swinging of the helmets. But yeah, you just look at some of these stats and it is ridiculous that week one, this defense held Joe Burrow to three points, which is crazy, crazy, crazy. And you look at something like uh, they held Tennessee to three points. They held um, San Francisco 49ers, like one of the best the best offensives I can think of, to 17 points. They let up, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, they let up 31 points to Lamar Jackson. But one of those was, or seven of those points were a pick six. So I am just feeling incredible about this team right now. I'm feeling incredible about our future and um i think uh, looking at the chat i just i saw that uh jeff said hey i have no worries whatsoever that we're gonna hold this brown team under 20 points and we did that 12 points absolutely dominating performance russ stepped up when it mattered the most and i'm just feeling really really good about it curious how some of my favorite people are feeling about it as well so we're gonna kick it over to my main man nate so I'm feeling great. I want to hear how my friends are feeling. Nate, my man, how you feeling? Feeling good, man. Broncos country should be pumped right now. This was a huge win against the 7-3 and three Browns. They're not 7-3 and three for no reason. This is not a nobody team. They have a fantastic defense, as you mentioned a minute ago. And uh, this was a tough game. This was a game that going into it, I was, I was honestly kind of nervous. I know you were pumped and super optimistic about it. Um, but even you said what 17 12 or something like that like, yeah i think that was my prediction 29 point I mean, we easily could have been over 30 points so uh very very impressed by this defense is stout mm. they're looking like a defense i don't want to name the year i don't want to i don't want to put any curses but they're looking like a defense we saw not too long ago and uh that led us to a super bowl all right i'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop i'll stop no i'm I, i'm right there with you and i've even gotten to some arguments in the chat about that that i obviously we don't have von miller and it's almost blasphemous to say his name but barrett browning is coming on nick benito was like a little too skinny his first years to stop the run but he is just the ultimate speed rusher and like i had called three weeks ago Drew Sanders took a ton of snaps and looks like a difference maker. So I think our defense is totally coming into form. And we won a game that I really feel good about every aspect of that game, whereas the Minnesota game felt kind of icky to only, you know, kick all those field goals in a row and just kind of eke it out. But I never was afraid. Did you feel confident this entire game as well? I felt confident in the victory uh, all the way through. I, I had like some nervous moments. I'll get into that when we get to high low water buffalo, which I'm prepared for this time because I know what a water buffalo is. But I, uh, I, I, uh, I felt overall, um, I never thought we were going to lose the game at all. Never thought that was going to happen. But I definitely had some concerns uh, at certain moments of the game. Tell me about those, Nate. What were you concerned with? You got to just relax, man. Like Aaron Rodgers <laughs> taught us in his dark, his darkness <laughs> retreat. R e l a x. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into my low. Is that cool? Can I go into my yeah? Low? Let's do it. So we do breakdown, uh, fast breakdown. We do high low water buffalo. Shout out my wife. She's the best. She came up with it. We do it at the dinner table with our kids. Meaning, what was like the best point of the game, the worst point of the game, and then like, wow, that is weird. So what were you're starting with your low? What was it, Nate? Starting with my low. Um, for a moment there, Broncos looked like the Broncos we've seen throughout the season that cannot extend a lead and hold it. They're addicted to close games. And it looked like another game where we were going to be addicted to that close game and not let the game, uh, 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 not take the game over and really take full control over it. It brought me back to that Washington game where even giving up uh, like 21 points mm. uh, in that lead, like I was just starting to get nervous and it was looking sloppy. We were getting to the point where um, the, the play clock is getting all the way down to one, all the way down to, to almost zero. Like a former coach, 
that we recently had that whose name will not be mentioned. Um, so for me, I felt like there was a point in that third quarter when we started off the third quarter, especially um, where I felt like we should have come out way stronger. And, and I was a little nervous at that point because we were letting them get in the game. We were letting them pick up momentum just like we did uh, last week. So um, that was my low. The other, the other low, by the way, the refs had a bad game. I know it's easy to blame the game or blame things on the ref, but they missed so many or they made so many bad calls. I was, I was beside myself. Yeah, I was right there with you. The pass interference on Cortland was like, you're kidding me. The, um, the Barrett Browning was not a roughing the passer. And then when they, they tried, I wonder if they thought it was Kareem Jackson, so they just automatically threw the flag. <laughs> like they, they're like, oh, safety for the yep. Broncos. That must be Kareem. Let's flag it. Because that wasn't, you, you don't know when you're going full out like that. And look at me, I'm an alpha. Like I know about playing football. But when you're going all out like that, you make your move at the guy before you know if it's a catch or not. And so the tight ends up there, he's he's leading with his shoulder, helmet up, like we're like they teach him. And yeah, to, I thought those were absolutely bogus. And I just love the the resiliency of this Broncos team to not let that get down on us. To Russell Wilson's fumble, not get down with it. Just hey, let's keep pushing through. And that didn't happen. Like you you reference Voldemort, Nathaniel Hackett. That didn't happen last year. Now. Push him back on your point about like the play clock was one running down. I actually thought that was pretty incredible because we break the huddle with so much time that Russell Wilson gets up there and it's almost like he's a composer. Like he he has twenty seconds and he's using it, he's milking it all the way and it always does make me be like snap it, snap it. Um, but yeah, totally, man. I would my in my low was definitely uh, the refs in that and and just hoping that that those flags don't um, take the wind out of our guys' sails and make them play different because I love the aggressiveness, how they're flying around with it, man. Yeah, and by the way, Locke also at the very end there, credit to the referees for figuring that one out where they had called him for uh, – uh, oh, shoot, what was, the last, what was the last call that just happened toward the end of the game? Yeah, on Amari and, Cooper. And they got it, they got it wrong, and they, and they took care of it. So yeah, that was good. But. Totally. Yeah, man, I wanted to start with highs because I'm just like Mr. Brightside, but you started us with, us with lows, which is fine because now all the bad stuff's behind us and it's all good now. Uh, what were your highs of this game, man? Uh, uh, first time 29 to 12 ever happened in the NFL. That's my high. I'm Ooh. kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, that's... Uh, whatever, dude. Uh, uh, firstly, I have two highs. I couldn't let go. Um, I had one... Actually, I have three, but I'm doing my best. Uh, how about P. Ryan showing his strength? I mean, P. Ryan mm. had a few few moments there where I was absolutely blown away. That's what you want from from RB two. Mm. If P. Ryan can run like that, uh, absolute beast mode style running. Um, sorry to say that. I know it's still saucy with the Seahawks, but um, he looked like a forty year old uncle when he's out there. <laughs> Um, the turkey that bowl. just lifts weights every day and, yep. and looks in the mirror. Half the time he's looking at his muscles while he's lifting weights. The other half the time he's looking at his beard. He's yep. a beast. The yep. other thing I'll say that I couldn't I couldn't choose between the two, uh, that double reverse fumble, fumble reverse you could call it, mm. Broncos ball, that was the moment the game was over. That yep. really was it. There were moments before that that I felt like, oh, this is done. We, we got this. That's it right there. That was, they were gaining ahead of steam potentially, but no, it's over. Yep, I'm with you, man. That was pretty amazing, without a doubt. Um, my high uh, would definitely, it was probably just our resiliency altogether that, that Russ fumbled, and in the past, I, I know he'd get down on himself, and he didn't, and this past defense is, like, I can't tell you how scared I was against this defense, and we just balled out of control. So absolute high was just seeing us show up when it mattered most, we have now beat the best defense in the league, the hottest team in the league, <clears throat> Josh Allen in Buffalo, Patrick Mahomes. The week before that, we dominate the Packers. The week before that is a short week on a Thursday night. We hold Pat Mahomes to one touchdown. Like we're we're have all the momentum, and and the NFL is about momentum. The best Broncos team I've ever seen was the team that lost in the Super Bowl to the Seahawks because the Seahawks had all the momentum in that year. And it all peaked to that point and momentum wins. And so, yeah, that's my high, man, is the momentum. The wind is at our back. Let's ride. Uh, okay, what's your water buffalo? 
Uh, my, by the way, just a quick shout out since you mentioned Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills up 31 to 28 against the Eagles right now with 30 seconds left. Eagles ball. Uh, not a nobody team, right? Mm. Like not a, everyone wanted to call it a fluky game. They did the same thing with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's not a fluky game. Buffalo Bills have 31 points against the Philadelphia Eagles right now. They are a real, they're the real deal. Uh, but anyway, um, the water buffalo for me, that like just that thing that was kind of random that kind of stuck out to me was how we came out in the second half, uh, third and one. We're at that 31, and instead of doing a QB sneak, which we've done successfully every single time we've tried this season, we have not messed it up once yet. Um, we uh, uh, that, that I can remember anyway. We we do this little pitch out mm. to Javante and a loss of three. It was it was a terrible halftime adjustment, and it just was kind of really weird. And then we can't punt the ball sometimes. I feel like the fourth quarter we finally started putting the ball well, but the way we punted out of that situation was horrible. So I just felt like my water buffalo, like weird thing that's going on here is is what's happening at that halftime adjustment that we're not coming out like. Sean Payton's doing something right. So why why are we coming out in the second half not looking? I know I, we beat them. We beat them. We destroyed them. I'm I'm complaining. I'm I'm uh, um, splitting hairs here. But um, that was that was an odd thing for me. Didn't matter in the end. We're we are much better than this team, so it didn't matter. But kind of a funny thing is we're thinking about as you've been calling all season that we're going to the playoffs and we are going to go to the playoffs. Those are the types of things I'd like to see worked on. Yeah, man. Um, well, for sure, like you said, we're so much better than this team. How crazy is it to say that and not laugh? We're better than the seven and three Cleveland Browns. Like that's true. That's a cold hard fact, Jack. And that's just so awesome. Um, to me, got a couple water buffaloes from this game. Number one, please, 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 NFL, can we never have Mark Sanchez be our announcer again? He was awful. Like he's got this crusty, nasty hair. He says really weird things that don't make sense. And he, I, I just, can't, why are we listening to a guy who is responsible for the butt fumble? Like that's all I think of when I see him. And so please <laughs> NFL, don't take him. And the water Buffalo about Mark Sanchez was at one point, it shows our owner's box. And first off Broncos country, we got Walmart money. Like, think about that. We have the best owners in all of football, in all of professional sports. Like, more money, you hear more money than God. These guys almost have more money. Um, but the fact is, that is our ownership group, that we got the Walmarts and Condi Rice. And my other water buffalo was how weird it was when Mark Sanchez said, you know, there were rumors that Condi Rice was going to be the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. And I was like, were there? Like, do you think anyone actually thought that Someone in the Bush administration was about to coach a, a city that LeBron James had to get out of twice. Like, there's no way she was. Do you think for a second, Condi Rice is head coach of the Browns kind of person? Uh, there, there are. It's more likely that a guy like Mark Sanchez goes to bed at night uh, uh, several years ago, like seven, eight years ago, and and thinks, ah, no one will remember the butt fumble tomorrow. <laughs> No one will remember it next week. Yep. Nobody will remember it 10 years later. It's the most memed thing that's happened mm. in the NFL in history. Totally. And uh, he'll never live it down. Nope. He and has no business. He was awful, man. He has no yeah. business being, being a broadcaster. He wasn't. Uh, all right, Nate, final takeaways, and we'll close this one out. Final takeaways are the Broncos are five wins in a row. Now, last week, we got the fourth win in a row. It had been the first time since pretty much Peyton Manning, right? Yep. That we had won four games in a row. I mean, this is a team that uh, took a long time for people to start believing in. And now everyone's looking and realizing, holy smokes, it's the real deal. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, the, the playoff picture. Like we are no, there's no way we're out of this. Like we are still very much in this. This is a very much winnable wild card scenario for us so i'm feeling really positive about that remember houston's ahead of us but we play houston so beat houston and there's there's a tie in the uh um in the win loss record there so i think uh i think the broncos have a couple ways that they could make the playoffs but for sure the wild card is very much on the table oh yeah and uh there was a point when oakland or uh the raiders were up on Kansas, Kansas City. I'm like, we're gonna win the division. Well, like Twelve points. Yeah. I yeah, and I don't, I don't think that happens this year. But I'm telling you, we have all the momentum. Something crazy could happen that could stop that momentum. Like there could be a weird suspension or something like that. But I'm just telling you, the wind is at our back, 
And in a league when there is such parity, Nate just said Buffalo Bills are up on the Super Bowl, um, the predominant Super Bowl favorite, even though they just lot like we're in a league where the talent is like narrowly thin between each team because of the salary cap. And so when the talent is that close, it's all about coaching. And tell me another coach in the NFL you would rather have lead in the ship than Sean Payton. And I don't think he'll find one. And we're going to the playoffs and he's taken us there. And not just this year, the dynasty is back. Like that's what I'm encouraged about. Like one in five is hard to climb back from. Maybe we don't climb all the way back. I think we do, but we're going to the playoffs for the, uh, a bunch of years in the future. So y'all might want to clear out your January and February plans. Love it. I mean, it's a cold, hard fact. Uh, all right. Broncos country. So much to break down. We are on to Houston. Now Broncos country. Let's ride.